or listen to other users' sounds, including famous people, um, and uh, socialize around that. And you can do so on our website, mobile apps, or you can embed uh, those sounds in your website or blog uh, using our widget. Um, and uh, my background is an academic background in music information retrieval, so that field that is between signal processing, machine learning, and musicology. I done my PhD in that field, and at SoundCloud, I am in charge of designing, prototyping, and implementing uh, machine learning algorithms for music discovery. So as such, this talk um, is more going to be a machine learning, big data talk uh, with optimization, so that everything that we do uh, could be done real time and is most of the time done real time, but um, some of those things are actually done offline. All right, so discoverability. Uh, what do we mean by that? So um, we have what we call the explore section that looks a bit like that. Um, and on that section, the concept is that you can discover uh, new music and non-music audio content to listen if you don't quite know where you want to listen to. Uh, and we're surfacing um, the content that is trending on the site, so things that other listeners have been enjoying and listening to. So uh, you can see that as um, a non-personalized uh, recommendation, uh, but you can still tune it by choosing your categories, so um, genres for music or um, uh, categories such as storytelling or comedy for uh, non-music audio content. Uh, and that's page um, or section is updated several times uh, per day so that you can always get fresh and new interesting content for you. But um, even before just going into discovering new content, uh, one of our prime or um, uh, yeah, first goal is actually to make sure that you find what you're looking for on, on the site, especially when you, you, you use the search engine. So uh, for those of you that used to um, um, use SoundCloud a few months ago. That's what SoundCloud looked like before December 2012. And um, as you can see, uh, this is a, it was also the old search engine. And if you were putting something in there, you were not always finding what you were looking for. Uh, for instance, rope, um, I don't know for you, but when I put rope in a search engine on a music site, I kind of hope that I will get the Foo Fighters song. And you can see here that on the first page, you don't get the Foo Fighters song. You will actually have to go several, through several pages to actually get something. But all of those results actually contain rope somewhere, either the username or the song name and so on, but it's not uh, the famous song by the Foo Fighters. Um, so yes, yeah, some would argue that there is some discovery uh, aspect of not looking what you're searching for and not finding what you're searching for by discovering new things, but um, yeah, that's not exactly the, the objective here. So we discovered that like we wanted to boost the, the popular content uh, on top a bit like that. So this is the new search, new search engine and new interface. Um, and in there, when you search for rope, you actually get the Foo Fighters song on top and also other results that are relevant. Um, and this is typically uh, what we call a re-ranking problem. And uh, the most famous re-ranking uh, algorithm is the PageRank. Uh, it was invented by Larry Page, uh, and it, it's used or has been used by Google. Uh, they've been changing it and actually optimizing it and, and implementing new versions of it all the time. So um, a quick hands up, like who is familiar with the PageRank? Okay, and who knows its principle and equations inside out? Right, okay, so I think we can still go into some details about that so that you understand how the disco rank differs from the page rank. Right, so the concept of the, of the page rank is that um, uh, you see the web as a graph and uh, the nodes are the web pages and the edges are the hyperlinks linking those web pages. Um, so the rank of a node or the page rank of a node depends on the link structure of the graph. So you have a random surfer uh, that is surfing the web, randomly surfing the web. And uh, that surfer would start on a page, so it would type uh, a page in the, in the browser, and uh, that page, for instance, could be A here, and would execute a random walk um, um, over the hyperlinks. And um, at every page, it, this surfer has equal probability of going through any of the 
other pages that are hyperlinked from that page. So in that case, three pages are hyperlinked from A. Each one of them has one third of the probabilities of being the next one the surfer is going to choose. And intuitively, as the surfer proceeds in his random walk, some nodes are visited more often than others. Uh, for instance, in that graph, very small one, you can imagine that C is going to be visited quite a lot. Um, and the principle behind the page rank is that those frequently visited pages are more important, so they should rank higher. All right, so let's look at the math quickly. Um, so every graph can be represented as an HMCC matrix, um, A here, that represents uh, that graph exactly. So you have A, B, C, D, E, your nodes on, on the columns and rows. And so as you can see on the first row, A is linked to B, C, D, and E, and then it's B and so on. Um, so yeah, if there is a link, it's one. If there is no link, it's zero. Um, and then you can transform that a density matrix into a transition probability matrix, M, which is just a, a row normalization of, of A. So meaning that on every row, you know actually the probability of going from that node to another one. So on the first line, you would see that you have 25% chances of going to B, C, D, and E from A. So uh, that's exactly what we wanted to represent. Um, and then what you're looking at is the probability di distribution of, of the surface position, R, which is a vector, so a vector of all the nodes again. And um, so the sum of those probabilities on that vector should be one, and that gives you the importance or um, how, how probable uh, the surfer is going to be in that node at every moment. Um, yeah, so quickly looking at this. So you could start from any um, position. Uh, here uh, we decided to, to start in position A, but you could also um, decide that it's equally, equally probable to start in any position. That doesn't matter at all for the page rank. Um, so this is your, your um, initial vector. And intuitively, if you multiply R by or R0 by M, you will know what is the probability for that surfer to be in um, in every node at the next step, just one step ahead. So here you are, um, L1 is going to be that one, and you have equal probabilities of being in B, C, D, or E. And if you go on like that, um, you're going to see evolving the probabilities uh, of your surfer, and so on. Right, but um, here you can see that there is a problem, because ultimately in that graph, the surfer gets stuck in E. Um, because E is what we call a dangling node. There is no outgoing link from E. Uh, and also you can notice that a probability distribution doesn't sum up to one anymore, which is not good. So um, also you could imagine that this is not a very realistic situation, not just because the graph is very small, but also because in practice uh, nobody gets stuck on a web page. Like you, if you end up on a web page with no hyperlink, you would be like, oh, I'm going to type another one, or you know, you don't even notice. You're just like continue browsing the web. So, um, so that's not realistic. And also, what you want to know is how often, in average, each page is visited. Um, so this doesn't give you quite your answer. So um, then there is this additional operation that you can use uh, in the page rank that is solving exactly that problem. It's the teleportation. Uh, so that random surfer can suddenly go from one node to a node that is not uh, linked to it. Um, and what that means is that uh, you have equal probability from a dangling node to go to any other node, including itself. Um, so 1 over n in that case, where it's n being the number of nodes. Um, so this is how you use a teleportation operation for um, a dangling node, but you actually, so in terms of the matrix that you, we have, the transition probability matrix, it means that for a dangling node that has a row of zeros here, you would actually replace all the zeros by 1 over n, so 1 over 5 in our case. So that's your new matrix. Um, and um, again, in reality, uh, from any page, even if uh, you have hyperlinks in that page, you would still be able to type a new page and uh, go to another page that is not linked to it. So um, you use the teleport operation so that you say um, you have a probability alpha of actually jumping to a random page that is not linked to your current page and a probability one 
minus alpha to go on with your random work. So that gives you a new um, matrix P that is 1 minus alpha times M prime plus alpha over N times the matrix of ones. Okay, so that's that's some of the math. Um, so go back, going back to the page rank, so this principle of multiplying over and over again that uh, vector R, in that case, with the teleport operation, um, the vector is going to converge to a steady state. That will be your page rank vector. So at some point, it will just not change anymore, um, and you will have uh, the probability of being in every node at every moment. Um, yeah, so that's that's the principle. So just quickly about the equations again. Um, so if P was uh, the first equation, then uh, your um, ranking vector is going to be the one in the bottom. Um, and it's a simplification. So uh, we were having that one before. And it's easy to read. Oh, I mean, actually, it's that one where you simplify here so that it's actually easier to compute, but um, that last row actually is still using M without the dangling node uh, included, and this is covering the dangling nodes. Um, um, and basically, this simplification means that you can use your sparse matrix M that still contains only the nodes that are connected, and it's usually very sparse, and this is just an operation that is the same for every single uh, node in your graph. So it's just an addition of that number that you compute just once. And similarly for the last um, item. So this is going to speed up your computation considerably. All right, so how do we go from there to SoundCloud disk rank? Well, on SoundCloud, we still have search. Um, but what we have is a, a bit of a, um, a different kind of search than just Google. So Google has web pages and uh, all search engines have just all the web pages. But in, in SoundCloud, we have different kind of entities. We search over users, we search over um, uh, tracks, we search over sets. So sets are playlists that users create. And we also search over groups, so groups of users that um, are together uh, linked by some sort of um, uh, common taste or, or theme. So, for instance, when you type uh, Siguros on, on search on SoundCloud in the everything section, you would um, get the uh, band, but also you would get, for instance here, a set that has been created by your user containing several of Siguros' songs, and uh, you would get um, some of uh, Siguros' uh, most famous songs on top. And that's typically what the user would like to see, because, you know, just one one result um, and the top one is obviously the user, but like then you would be able to actually already kind of browse the content of that user. All right, so that makes things a bit more complex because then you have a graph where the entities are connected, but the, those connections mean something. Um, and they mean, for instance, that a user favorited a track or that a track is featured in a playlist uh, or that a user followed a user and so on. So we call that universal search, and that means searching across people, sound sets, and groups. And we want one unique vector for that, because as I said, we have one unique set of results. So that means that we're actually going to weight all the links on, based on the type of event. Um, so the events, again, being uh, if it's a favorite or featured. And all those events are timestamps. So when you favorite something, we know when you favorite something, and when you unfavorite something as well. So you would say, OK, um, let's, let's imagine that um, following information is more important. So following a user means that you want to know what this user is, is going to do next and so on. So it has a, a higher weight than, for instance, um, listening to a track. Um, so those are the lambdas. And basically what that means is that your identity matrix, uh, instead of containing zeros and ones, is going to contain those lambdas instead, based on the type of connection um, between the entities. And it's a big matrix because it contains all the entities on SoundCloud, but again, it's very sparse because, as you can imagine, a user is only browsing and, and listening and favoriting a small portion of the entire graph of entities. So it contains a lot of zeros, which for, in our case, is very useful. 
All right, so uh, but let's go back to Explore. How do we integrate that in Explore? Um, well, uh, we use that to identify content that is trending um, because we know, again, the timestamp of each of those events. And um, the uh, more recent the listen or the favorite and so on, the higher the weight. So we add to every single of those weights uh, time decay uh, that is basically based on the creation date of that event, uh, of that connection. and um, and um, yeah, we have a decay steepness in there. So basically, again, you have a new agency matrix uh, where you still have the lambdas based on the type of connections and then also the time decay of that specific connection. Um, so again, that means that the most recent activities are uh, matter the most, so that would surface uh, the recent content. So that's what we call the time decay disk rank. And we use it for explore, and the regular disk rank is used for search. All right, so let's get to the performance optimization uh, and how we can make that real time. So we have a very large graph, um, millions of entities uh, and events. And uh, the first time we tried implementing the disk rank, it was taking several hours of computation, um, 12 hours or so. Um, and we managed to trim that down to a few minutes only using the sparsity of the matrix. Um, an optimized storage of the graph in memory and version copy of the disk rank. So technically we could compute the disk rank real time, but, but as you're going to see, it's mostly offline. Um, right, so using sparsity. So as I said before, uh, M being very sparse, um, those computations are going to be uh, optimized and then this is just additions that you do to your ranking vector and that number is the same for all the uh, all the nodes in your vector and that number as well. So it's just one, well, two additions to every node. What we did as well is that we remapped all the entity IDs. So we have users that are deleted because they were malicious users or fake users. We have uh, tracks that are just deleted by the users themselves. Uh, so we, we lose a lot of like uh, entities on the way uh, since the creation of SoundCloud and so we don't want to be like dealing with those huge IDs uh, in there because they take a lot of memory um, and so we remap all the entity IDs um, to get rid of the gaps uh, so that's one optimization as well and then we optimize uh, in memory so that the graph can be hold in memory so all the edges details and for each edge we have the to and the from information but also the creation date uh, and the type of edge. All that is stored in memory in a byte, uh, a byte array, sorry. Um, we buffer the byte array into an opaque byte block pool. And uh, we don't use objects at that moment, so everything is really at the byte level. And we sort the buffer byte in place. So all that allows uh, for like very optimized uh, storing of the graph in memory. Um, and then at computation time, uh, when we need to compute the disk rank, uh, we actually even more optimize that, so, and also when we store it on, on disk, we delta encode the uh, agency list. So basically what we know in here when we do the matrix multiplication is that we only need um, the uh, agency list. So uh, for every two uh, from node, we have all the twos. And um, we even delta encode that so that uh, because they are in, in a given order, so let's say ID 1 and then 2 and then 5, we store only the difference between those IDs so that those numbers are even smaller um, to store. Uh, so again, very highly optimized so that uh, all that uh, is computed much faster and uses less space on disk. All right, and then on top of that, we keep versioned copy of the disk rank. So um, the uh, we store... Um, in HDFS, actually, the disk rank vector of results. So, like I said, and actually, we store several of them um, over a week or so. And um, we store the last, the last version of the disk rank graph uh, on disk. And we rebuild the entire disk graph um, from scratch once a week. But otherwise, in between, uh, we actually only create smaller. Uh, graph segments that represent the difference between the last disk rank graph, full disk rank graph, 
and the current time. So basically getting all the new edges and, and nodes uh, in that segment. Um, and we use the prior of the disco rank results as the starting point of our new computation. And that converges is really fast because basically that graph is not very different. You have a few more connections and a few more entities. But um, the probability of the random surfer being in one of them is globally going to be approximately the same. So starting from a prior, instead of having uh, the surfer being in one node and all the rest zeros, starting from that prior that you already know from the previous graph speeds up considerably the computation. So you actually need like two or three iterations, sometimes a bit more, but like usually um, a very small number of iterations of the disk rank. Um, and that also has the side effect of allowing for experimentation. Um, and um, that means that if we want to try something new in the disk rank, changing the weights or something, uh, we can we have we have all those version copies and we can actually compare them, switch between them, um, um, yeah, enable some of them for some users and so on, and uh, compare the results. So do some A/B testing and so on. Right. So just quickly to finish. Um, the integration of all that in our infrastructure uh, is the following. So, uh, like I said, we have uh, bad jobs uh, from the database to actually get all the new connections uh, into a graph segment. We put all that in the discovery ranking jobs, so the computation of the disk rank, and uh, store the results and the disk graph in HDFS. And then uh, what we do is, because we, we use Elasticsearch, uh, we reload all those results in Elasticsearch, combining the disco rank with the Lucene score of the um, documents, so that we have all that ready for the search, but also for the Explore uh, dispatchers. Yeah, that's basically it. So um, just I would like to mention that we're hiring, so if you want to talk about jobs at SoundCloud, you can also talk to me about that. But otherwise, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions after the other talks for lunch, for instance. Um, so thank you.